Aloha everybody, welcome back to my channel. This is Kai Wasa and today we're going to do yet another edition of browsing through my Hawaiian record collection one album at a time. We're on the letter F, so let's pick up where we left off last time and look at some more Hawaiian vinyl. Uh, this is an artist by the name of Dwayne Fulton, D. Wayne or Dwayne Fulton, uh, who was a harpist uh, who was in Hawaii for uh, many years performing. Um, the Harp Wears a Lay is the name of this one on Mahalo Records. This is quite a beautiful album. It's sort of a somewhat traditional Hawaiian ensemble, however, with the uh, with the harp in the lead, and that's Mr. Fulton. Traditional Hawaiian songs. Very nice album. Uh, he, let me see, where does he originally come from? I think it says on one of these. San Francisco, maybe? I don't know, but he... Uh, had been a harpist in uh, Turkey, of all places, and had uh, been with some orchestras in Europe as well, and went here on a vacation, and loved it, and moved here. Um, he is an American, uh, originally, the mainland. A Night at La Ronde Restaurant with Dwayne Fulton. Uh, the La Ronde, uh, La Ronde Restaurant was quite a famous place. On the top of the Almoana building, right next to the Almoana shopping center, it was one of those revolving restaurants. Uh, this one is uh, music, a mix of music, some few Hawaiian songs, and uh, classical inspired and popular and Japanese and whatnot. Sort of a potpourri, which is what the rest of her, his albums were. Um, this album came out in 1968 on Sounds of Hawaii Records. A Night at the Captain's Galley. This was another gig of his. Um, he was at La Ronde Restaurant here for a number of years. He was at the Surf Rider uh, Hotel. And uh, again, it's a mix of different types of music, dinner music and Hawaiian songs and whatnot. Also on Sounds of Hawaii, Night at the Captain's Galley at the Surf Rider Hotel. And then now uh, these next two albums are from a uh, mainland gig, although uh, An Evening at the Warehouse Restaurant, which is in Marina Del Rey, obviously sort of tropically inspired, and actually it is the same album as this. It's the same music, so I would assume that these uh, were probably sold at the venues, right? Probably when he was performing, I don't know. Same record as the previous one. And then there's one more. I don't know if this one was ever released in Hawaii. This is all f also from the warehouse restaurant. And again, it's a mix of uh, just popular songs and Hawaiian songs, etc. Next artist, kind of interesting, um, originally, well, from, not originally, I guess he lived in his, his entire life, I believe, in uh, Colombia in South America, uh, Antonio, or Tonio Fuentes, who is the founder of the record company Discos Fuentes, was a steel guitar player and recorded quite a number of uh albums on the Hawaiian guitar. None of it Hawaiian music, all of it uh, Latin American songs, most of the albums. I don't have volume one. I, I, these, this is called um, Queridas Que Yoran or something, which is uh, Strings That Cry or the Crying Strings, referring to the steel guitar. And um, I don't have volume one, but I just ordered it today. I was actually on Discogs, and there was one kind of inexpensively, and because I never seem to come across it anywhere, but it was there today. Disco Fuentes in Medellin, Colombia. 
also uh, this particular one made in Miami distributed out of Miami he did a number this is volume 2 there's uh, volume 3 I love this picture particularly standing with his record albums and the steel guitar and leaning against the chair smoking a cigarette volume four and these are just they're all uh, Latin American songs there's a volume five which I do not have also strings that cry in Venezuela so uh, one assumes these are all Venezuelan songs. And then we have the music of Colombia with strings that cry. Now, as I said, I don't have it, but there you can see there's there's number one, and there's number five, and there's another one, uh, international, and there's a couple of other ones. There's one, uh, Ecuador, there's uh, Strings That Cry in Mexico, which I have ordered, I have to tell you the story, I've ordered that one twice. I've actually bought it twice. First time I bought it, uh, it arrived cracked. These, it's Some of these records on this label are... This one's okay, but there's some that are very, very brittle. Um, it arrived cracked. Not surprisingly, I think it would be really hard for that particular one. It's so brittle to go anywhere. Uh, so I ordered it again not too long ago, and I got a note from the seller that, uh, unfortunately, it had cracked when he was packing it. <laughs> so uh, Strings That Cry in Mexico is eluding me yet. Um, and there's also Ecuador, and I, th I think that's it. Um, unless he did a Christmas one or something, I don't know about. Okay, and then uh, wrapping up the letter F in our, our regular Hawaiian rap albums, uh, we have Annette Funicello. Now, come on, who doesn't love Annette Funicello? And this record, uh, when I was a little kid in upstate New York, my neighbors that lived on the corner, the Decipios, had uh, the single Luau Cha 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 and Pineapple Princess by her. And I used to play it quite a bit. And uh, years later, when I started collecting Hawaiian records and, of course, discovered how expensive this record is and kind of rare it is, I didn't pay that much for this one because, you know, it's not in the best condition. But any Hawaiian uh, Annette Funicello record is pretty collectible. Vista, the Disney label. And um, not like she's a great singer. She was not a great singer. Uh, it's kind of funny if you listen to this record how they, they really cover up that she can't. She has a very limited range and she could not, you know, hit certain high notes. And, uh, they, they, you know, the, they would really up the chorus, would come in and kind of cover up. The, she couldn't really hit those notes. But it's such a cute record, and there's some really cute, cute songs on it. Date Night in Hawaii, probably my favorite. Uh, Pineapple Princess has actually been done by a couple of local groups. Uh, not very often, but, yeah, it's a funny song. And then I have one, a really horribly beat-up copy. Not really Hawaiian, but Annette's Beach Party. Um, and it's horrible, horrible shape. I have to find... It's another one that's really expensive. I'm not going to pay a lot of money for this because there's really nothing Hawaiian on it. Uh, the one thing that's interesting about it, though, is that on this song, there's the album called Luau Cha Cha Cha. On this album, it's exactly the same song called uh, Surf and Luau, and uh, they just change the words. They just have her saying, instead of Luau Cha Cha Cha, she goes... Surfing cha 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 or something. I have to check that out. They they just she redubbed some words over it, but it's exactly the same thing with her, uh, her voice redubbed. Okay, so let's listen to a few samples. Thank you. 
What a treat, what a treat, what a wicky wacky treat As she beat on a coconut drum And that's why every day is a holiday in I hope you enjoyed uh, those records and the needle drops. If you have any of these records or any comments or interest or whatever, uh, please leave them down below in the comment section. I enjoy hearing from you. And until next time, have a good week.